Bismillahirrohmanirrohim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello, good evening Well, General the lecturer Ustaz Dr. Kaharudin S.E.P.M.H.U.M. as a lecturer of psycholinguistic for language teacher and all my beloved friends who have time to watch my video So, first of all, let us thanks to the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who has given us mercy and blessing so I can complete my uh, second assignment and don't forget to send the salawat to our best prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik alaih who has brought us from the darkness into the lightness so allow me to introduce myself my name is Rizka Fibrianti from PBIA majoring in English Education Faculty of Tabi and Teacher Training uh, State Islamic University of Aladdin Makassar well in this opportunity I would like to answer about six question about psycholinguistic well uh, the first uh, question is what do you know of language in a linguistic perspective the second language in discourse perspective and language in psycholinguistic perspective so my answer is language uh, in uh, language in a linguistic perspective so language is one of the method used by humans to uh, communicate with consists of three things namely the sender of the message the message and the recipient of the message according to uh, Koharudin 2021 language may be the defined as a method or a system of communication used by humans uh, to communicate meanings or message from talks and feeling which is constructed from conventionalized elements of symbols such as sounds words praise praises sentences and meanings so we may say that language as a system has at least have uh, five basic elements or components that we should know namely sounds or in the branches of linguistic we say phonetics and pho phonology uh, words we said morphology praises sentence we say syntax syntax and meaning in language we say semantics and the last the use of language we we say uh, pragmatics so the second in language in discourse perspective language is one of the means used by humans for communication and has two main components namely forms uh, like phonetics and phonology morphology syntax and semantic and function that we can use so the last is language in psycholinguistic perspective from the perspective of psycholinguistic uh, language is a product product of the mind that one wants to confide and consists of three aspects like uh, namely producing comprehending and acquisition the difference among the three aspects above lies in terms of focus that linguistics primarily is minds the formal uh, structure of language while discourse perspective emphasizes real world communication and psycholinguistic focus on the cognitive process of language and the similarities of all three perspectives are concerned with understanding and explaining language albeit from different angels they acknowledge the role of context and culture in shaping language use they interest in areas like semantic meaning and syntax about grammar well, the second question is, in order to be able to produce speech, the mind goes to a stage that, what stage are they? And when do humans, in order to be able to function the stage, explain to your answer. So my answer is, according to day and 2021, language production is a series of processes that occur in producing language products in the form of utterances and expression. In this context, it is important to know that when psycholinguistic study language production, this discussion will focus more on a spoken language and leave aside discussion about written language production and the production of sign language. According to Griffin, Z, Z, M, and Ferrero, PS 2006, in this regard, level and 19 and 89 is of the opinion that the stage of language production can logically be uh, grouped into the three main stages, namely the, conce the conceptualization stage, the stage for determining what intention will be conveyed, uh, the formulation stage, the stage for determining what should be used and how to express the intent 
question that exists at the conceptualization stage. And last, the articulation stage, the stage for conveying intention formed in the form of utterance and expression. Well, uh, the third question is, do you agree with saying that conceptualization needs semantic uh, knowledge? Why explain the reason for your position and what are the function of semantic knowledge for the conceptualization? Explain your answer with example. So, uh, maybe uh, my answer yes, I agree with the statement that conceptualization requires semantic knowledge. The first stage of language production is conceptualization, which can be understood as a process of bringing concept, ideas, or intention into our minds as an initial, initial preparation. Uh, before we start speaking, to be able to carry out this stage, we need semantics knowledge that is the knowledge possessed by a person so that he or she able to formulate and determine the meaning or message to be confined before speaking. In psycholinguistics, such as knowledge is also known as an abstract idea in form of purpose or as a concept. Written 2013, a request that when we to speak, we will start the speaking process with a nation and a abstract idea about what we're going to say in our minds before we choose and use words and sentence structure to express the idea. This process is then conceptual which a process in its or ability to talk about experience. The current situation is about our lives in this world Kahadun 2021 defends its concept for Malik in a speaker head. Well, the next uh, question is, what do you know of semantical micro-planning and semantical macro-planning? Explain your answer with example. So, my answer is, Warren P. 2013 believes that the semantic knowledge used in the conceptualization stage can be categorized into two types of knowledge, namely semantical macro-planning and semantical micro-planning. Semantical macro-planning refers to the action of a speaker to determine what types of speech acts it can be used to express concept or abstract ideas in this mind effectively speech ad means an action chosen by someone to express a message or concept whether by asking requesting explaining comparing etc clark 1999 Nineteen and ninety-six. The example of semantical macroplanning consider an educational content generator in a semantical macroplanning. It determines the overall structure of a lesson. For instance, it decides that the lesson will start with an introduction followed by key concept, example, and a summary. It doesn't get into the specific of individual sentence but focus on the global organization of the contents. Meanwhile, semantical microplanning is an action taken by speakers in determining and using the types of speech age used to communicate message in his, in his mind and which fudge will be used as the main focus to be highlighted so that they can be conveyed to the other party. The example of semantical microplanning Imagine a weather forest casting system generating a weather report. In semantical microplanning, it decides on the ex exact wording for a sentence like the temperature will be around 25 deg degrees Celsius with a chance of rain in the afternoon. It involves selecting the words, number, and specific phrase to convey this information accurately. Well, the next question is conceptualization takes place in the brain. Which part of the brain runs the function? And I explain your answer with theory and example. So my answer, Cho H. M. et al. 2023 provide an explanation of the areas of the brain that play important roles in speech and language. The areas of the brain have crucial roles in speech and language, AI, AA, Wernix area, Broca's area, as well as Angular Virus area. Each of the area perform different function in language produ production. So the first Wernick area is the area of the brain involved in language processing from conceptualization to information. The section start pre-linguistic activities are determining concept and choosing appropriate words and sentence structure. Then send pre-linguist information to Broca area. The second broadcast area is the part of the brain playing a role in producing speech. Therefore, the articulation stage is carried out by this part of the brain. Uh, the last is angular gyrus area performs the function of receiving language products up to the language comprehension stage.
And the last question is, what do you know about pause, psycholinguistic pause, and failed pause? So support your answer with theories. And so my answer is one prominent theorist proposed by Levold 1989 suggests that pause in speech production occur during the planning and ex execution phase. Speaker pause, uh, pause the plan there utterances retrieve words from memory and organize the structure of their sentences. Pauls help reduce cognitive load uh, during this uh, process according to Jumpers G. G. 1992 decided to note that the contextualization process is taking place in the pattern of pulse, a temporary start in speech produced by someone when speaking with other people. Uh, the second is pulse in psycholinguistic are a significant aspect of language production and comprehension. They play a crucial role in the flow and structure of spoken language. Many studies show that the minimum duration of a pulse, uh, counted as a pulse for conceptualization, pulse for thinking is uh, 200 millisecond or equals to 2 second, where in 2030, uh, pulse uh, 2013. Pulse, which is used for conceptualization process, is also called a psycholog psychological pulse. However, pulse is not the only source for conceptualization. Sometimes, some people do conceptualization by slowing down their rate of speaking without producing silence at all. Uh, Fill it uh, pulse, like O or M, are often used in speech and they serve several functions. One theory called the syntactic repair theory suggests that field pause can uh, signal, signal a need to revise or contact the syntax of a sentence. Alternatively, they can function as cognitive style, giving speaker time to think and plan their speech while maintaining the flow in a conversation. There are at least three reasons why someone makes a field pause field pause, including to go time to search for and find the right words to show that the speaker has not finished speaking, Clark and 3 2002, and to delay speaking time, 3 GEF 2007. So maybe that's all from me. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.